In this video, we'll compare DeFi Render and Enscape through all of the steps of the workflow while still working on the same sketch of model. We'll compare each of these software in all these categories, composition, lighting, materials, visual settings, and the asset library. And then once we have the final results, we'll do a full comparison. Let's get started with the first step. As far as composition goes, both software have a similar workflow. I start by choosing the angle, choosing the aspect ratio, fixing the field of view and turning the view into two point perspective. Once I do that, I basically save the camera in both software. The difference is that in D5, once you start work on the project itself, you will notice that there are different settings applied to the camera view and different settings once you are out of the view so just making changes in the overall environment so if you make some changes and you're not already inside the camera view those changes won't be applied another part of the workflow which is a little bit different is that for every change you make even inside the camera view you still have to update the camera and apply these changes in order to turn that off where all the settings apply to all the views you can click on the scene and press the apply to all environment and effect section i did that in my workflow and it just makes things a lot easier in enscape on the other hand inside the settings you will have the presets option where you can also have different settings applied to different views but when moving outside of the camera the last preset used will be the active one so you don't have to keep updating the setting for each view when it comes to lighting there are some differences let's first get started with my process in Enscape. i always use an hri on the exteriors if you don't know what hris are or have never used one here's how i can conclude it with one sentence it is basically an image taken in real life that you can import in your render to mimic real life lighting and hide the horizon line that the software have on default. Enscape also has default Azure eyes inside the software, but they are really bad, so I always use external ones. To do that, I go inside the visual settings, sky, choose skybox, and make the sun direction as the brightest point. However, something really cool about D5 is the atmospheric match, where you can upload a reference image as, let's say, a mood inspiration, and with one click, D5 will attempt to match the same sky and lighting mood. Now, I won't say that the results are always perfect in one click. You definitely have to try out a few references to choose the best one. However, I have used it in a few instances, and it is such a great feature and a game changer when it comes to speed and ease of workflow. Not only that, but another very cool feature that D5 render has when it comes to lighting in the preset library. You can basically go in there and choose one of the lighting and effect settings that are already set up for you and in one click you will be able to apply that mood to the whole picture both of these features are such a game changer in my opinion they improve the whole efficiency of the workflow without diving deep into technical difficulties which is what we are trying to stay away from another thing that stands out for lighting in d5 compared to enscape is that the lighting objects can be turned off to not show in reflections and this is especially important in interiors Enscape has been missing this feature for so long and it is crucial in spaces with mirrors. When it comes to materials, the workflow is pretty similar, I would say. You can import external PBR maps in both software or you can use materials directly from their library. We have material presets where you can create certain looks with one click such as grass, water, etc. However, in terms of variety of materials, I think D5 wins that since it has over 2,000 materials in the library while Enscape has only about 400. And on top of that, if you are missing texture maps such as displacement maps and buff maps, you can generate them with AI, which is pretty cool. On the other hand, the overall quality of how those materials look also depends on how you set them up, but I can confidently say that the grass is much better in D5 and the glass has much more precise reflections. As far as the amount of visual settings offered or effects as they are called in D5, I think are pretty similar in both software. They offer about the same amount of options, which I think is very good. It helps users stay more focused on what matters most while still maintaining a good amount of creativity freedom. However, here's what I noticed. I think generally speaking, the default D5 render settings keep the image temperature a bit too much on the colder or bluish side, and the Enscape settings keep it a bit warmer than it should be. In terms of how the settings are set at default, I think that Enscape has a better output if you plan to just leave everything at default. However, if you have extra time to tweak things around, I think D5 has a much larger quality cap as in a lot more um, quality potential overall, I would say. When it comes to the asset library, I think this is the category with the biggest difference. I mean, I can confidently say that the variety of assets that D5 has is a lot larger with over 10,000 assets whereas Enscape has only 3,000 and the quality of them in my opinion is a lot better in D5 at least for a vegetation I can 100% assure you for that. Another aspect that we have to consider is a scatter tool. In my opinion the Enscape scatter tool is so inconsistent the density slider doesn't even seem like it makes any difference sometimes and it won't affect the placement and in D5 the tool is so much more customizable. You can add sub areas within the same material or model just by color code also, another big thing that you can do is you can affect the scatter area and adjust it even after the 
models have been placed and confirmed. Meanwhile, in Enscape, once you create the scatter, you have no longer any ability to change what you've placed. I just think that Enscape's scatter tool is a bit more rigid. I mean, they both do the job, but overall D5 is a lot more customizable. However, one thing that I definitely have to stop at is animated objects. And I have to emphasize this one because ever since I've been using Enscape for the past four years, everyone, literally everyone has been requesting that in the Enscape forum, in comments, in my inbox, and Enscape has made zero moves towards that. D5 has completely nailed this one because it offers animated objects and this just makes it a whole game changer when it comes to video walkthroughs. So these are the final results of the same model in both software. Even though I mentioned all of these advantages that D5 render has in terms of the features, I think the output quality of this particular project has come out better in Enscape. Now, this is the same project, same composition, same image drive, same user, but my experience with the software is vastly different. Although in this particular instance, the Enscape render looks better, keep in mind, that I have used Enscape for the past four years, while I have used D5 Render maybe for 16 to 20 hours in total. And don't get me wrong, 90% of those hours have been documented in my live streams, and the results for this amount of hours spent in D5 are not that bad, to be honest. And let me tell you, something which is super important is that Enscape has been super slow with their development in the past few years, and it seems like D5 is so much faster with updates, so much faster with bringing out new features, listens a lot more to the community, and don't even get me started on their marketing because while they are putting out content regularly i mean the whole chaos team has been sleeping especially the social media team which in my opinion have no clue on what they're doing however here's my final conclusion on this for architects that need a fast minimum viable render that still has good output i think enscape still has huge advantage in the time to quality ratio however if you have 20 or 30 percent extra time and you want to add a lot more detail and you want more dynamic animations I definitely think that you should go for D5. And if you want to see in action how I create realistic interiors in D5, watch the video right here.